Hey guys, so I decided to make this video because when I was entering college, these are the types of videos that I would watch just to feel more prepared for going into college. So I'm going to be sharing some pieces of advice that I was told as well as some pieces of advice that I picked up on the way. So let's just get into how to schedule your college classes. So first off, like many people have said in these videos, Rate My Professor is amazing. Like, I highly recommend using it. So in case you don't know what Rate My Professor is, it's a website where students can go and rate their professors at their universities or colleges. So the first thing that you do when you go on Rate My Professor is you type in your college or university, or you can type in your professor's name. When you click on a professor, it will give you a rating. And the first rating that you usually see is like their average quality rating based on the reviews and this rating is out of five. Five being the best and of course one being the worst. So that's the first thing you see. Then the next thing you can see is like their average level of difficulty. That is very important as well as the quality. So all raters rate the level of difficulty and the quality of the education that they received in that class. Now, when I went to orientation for my college, when we were scheduling classes, they didn't let anyone go on my rate my professor. If they saw you on that website, they would tell you to shut it off immediately. They told you not to listen to rate my professor. So during orientation, I just picked whatever fit with the time schedule. And that's what happens to a lot of people, I think, is that if they don't know about Rate My Professor or if they aren't able to use Rate My Professor while they're scheduling their classes like I was, then most of the time you just gotta go with, oh, I think this time is okay, I think that day is okay, you know? Well, right after that, I was like, well, I heard from so many videos that Rate My Professor is the greatest place to pick out like which professors you think would work with you and like what are the good ones and which ones are not, not so good ones. So right when I came home, I went back into the portal and I started going through Rate My Professor to see the best teachers that I could pick for the classes that I was already selected to get into. So I ended up at home switching the classes that I was into into the classes that I wanted to be in based on the professor and the time, of course. So I ended up getting the schedule that I wanted based on the great professors because I went at home and looked through it. <laughs> So, and I actually did end up getting some really good professors that year. There is a bit of caution when using Rate My Professor though, because different people say different things based on how they're feeling, you know? So if someone gets a bad grade in that class, they are more likely, I think, to rate the professor poorly. Some people aren't like that, but like there's a lot of people who, if they're like scorned for getting a bad grade, they, they just blast their anger out on the teacher, say that they're a horrible teacher, give them bad ratings. And you know, that happens to some teachers, so you really gotta look through the ratings and filter out what they say. Along with the average quality and the level of difficulty, there is also a bunch of tags on the side where it says like, oh, this person's a tough grader, class participation is required, do you need textbooks, hilarious, or like things like that. So that is also another good way to judge like how it is. A lot of the times what I really look for in Rate My Professor is the workload, but that too can be like a hit or miss with the reviews because some people aren't as able to handle a bunch of work whereas other people are. It really depends. And I know like with the ENC classes, your English classes, like freshman and sophomore year, ENC 1101 or ENC 1102, a lot of people will say that that is really, really tough because it's a lot of workload. I personally didn't feel like that was that much workload. It was about a medium for me, but other people have felt like they were like overwhelmed with the work. A lot of the times you just got to get through it and just like pick a good professor not based on the workload in those classes because it kind of, it just depends on the person. So you'll also encounter teachers who you look them up on Rate with Professor and they have no ratings whatsoever. And I think a lot of the time this is because these are new teachers, at least that was my experience, is that the professors that I looked up that didn't have any ratings were new teachers. And sometimes you've got to end up taking their classes because you need that class and that might be the only class option available. So you have to take it. And it's kind of a hit or miss really because you don't know based on any of the reviews how they might be. So I had to do that um, freshman year for my first semester. I had to take a course where I couldn't find any ratings for this person. And I was like, okay, well, we'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> you just have to see how it goes. That person was a first time teacher and I thought that they did pretty well, you know? So other people just didn't feel it was engaging. And so by the end of that semester, they rated this teacher horribly. And I felt so bad for them because they didn't deserve that like they gave so many credit opportunities and things like that and like it was their first time and these people just like chewed them out so it kind of sucks but it honestly is a hit or miss and you just kind of 
gotta go with it sometimes. So just take Rate My Professor with a grain of salt. When I use Rate My Professor, I generally find that I like all my teachers that I choose and I haven't had like any bad teacher by using Rate My Professor. So it's up to you guys if you wanna use it. I feel like it's a great resource. Another great resource is if you know anybody on campus and they have taken the class that you're gonna take, definitely ask them like what they thought of their experience with their professor and if they recommend their professor. That is definitely a more reliable source I think than Rate My Professor. So if you do not have priority registration, that is something that will probably save you because I know like the footballers have priority registration and then other living learning communities have priority registration, honors colleges have priority registration. So if you are in none of those things, then you are basically the last person as a freshman to get into your classes. So what you wanna do there is if you do not have priority registration, go and try to get the earliest possible orientation day that you can get into because it is highly important if you wanna get into the classes that are good and you don't have to be shoved into a class that you don't want to get into. So if you don't have priority registration, try and get into the earliest possible orientation date so that you can get into the classes that you want to get into instead of being shoved into some other classes that you really wouldn't want to be in. And that is especially important if you are in a big university. Like, priority registration is very, very handy if you are in a big university. Another good thing to do is talk to your advisors. So I think freshmen usually have like a freshman year advisor. Definitely talk to them. They usually are there with you during orientation. So talk to them about like if you have any incoming credits, what credits those covers so that you don't have to take those classes. Definitely try to figure out like what classes you should take and like even ask them if you can like if they think that this is a class with a bunch of workload and if it's a little too hard with your other classes you know so definitely ask them because they do have some good advice to give especially if they've been there for a while also make sure to go to your university website and go on the undergraduate catalog and figure out what the classes are that you need to get your degree in that major. So use that to your advantage. I know it can be a bit confusing. Sometimes the university doesn't update it, but it's still a great resource to look at to see what classes you need that are like required classes, other classes that are like all your electives. So go to your undergraduate catalog for your major and make sure that you can see all the classes that are needed. Sometimes they say like, you have to choose one of these for your degree or you have to choose like two or three out of this section or like you have only like a math and science elective or things like that like make sure that you can see and read it reading it is very important i know it can be confusing and i found that after the first semester when you're trying to schedule your classes for the second semester the advisors will kind of also like say hey do you have like a tentative list of like what classes you want to take so that's where looking at your catalog really comes in handy and then they can give you advice based on the classes that you chose like if this one is very high stress and you chose another one that's also high stress and they can tell you like oh maybe you should take this class instead so it comes in handy like understanding your catalog this one's a very important one especially if you have a big campus do not schedule your classes within 15 minutes of each other for example if you have a class that ends at 3 p.m do not schedule another class that starts at 3 15 p.m because then you are going to be running across campus trying to get to that class and most likely you are going to be late. So don't do that. Make sure you give yourself enough time in between. So when you're in orientation, most of the times the advisors or like the people that are helping will say there is no such thing as a perfect schedule. You will not get your perfect schedule. But I will say, just try. I mean, Sometimes it doesn't always work out. It didn't work out for me my second semester. So sometimes it just doesn't work out, but try to get one day out of the week that is completely free of classes. You know, you might want that three day weekend where you have Monday off or Friday off so that you have that perfect time to just relax. And that is really good for when finals week comes. So you can have that like day to just chill. It's always good to like catch a break. So like, why not try to get that three day weekend or at least one day out of the week where you can just relax from all the other days in the week. Now also don't sign up for classes that start at like 8 in the morning, 8.30 in the morning unless you're truly able to get up that early and be ready and go 
to your class, then I don't recommend it unless you're like that. Because for me, and for a lot of people I know, it's just like, you are used to waking up super early to get to high school. And you've done that for four years. And like some people can get used to that and continue that in college. I was not one of those people. I scheduled my earliest class at 9.30 a.m. And it was fine, like the first few weeks, you know, into the semester. But towards the end where it was like almost getting towards finals, it's like, oh my God, it's so tiring to wake up at like 8.40 and have to be ready and then go and be at your class at 9.30. Like it just gets tiring after a little bit. So I wouldn't schedule my class at 8 or 8.30 in the morning. But in the end, it's up to you. You know, if you think you can handle it, if you can do it, you can wake up early. You can wake up early multiple days in a row. You know, you can schedule your classes early. There's no problem. So yeah, it's up to you. If you think you can handle it, go ahead. If you don't think you can, then try to schedule your classes at the very earliest, like 10 a.m. and later, you know, so that you know that you're gonna be there on time. So yeah guys, that is all I have for how to schedule your classes, especially during freshman year. If you guys have any video ideas for me or any videos that you want to see me do, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below for more and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys! Ow! <laughs> no! I need to like breathe. Isn't... Ow. And I know 